circle of red back and I'm going and leaving tracks in morning and I don't give a crap whether you stream or you torn this you can try to contest what you be needing an army beat them in Normandy current rappers to the warning Welcome to three count commentaries let's talk about Saturday Night Dynamite June 26, 2021 and what was a less bad episode of AEW Dynamite so let's start with the pinnacle and the uh, inner circle so the show starts with Sammy Guevara getting hit behind the back or like an arm by a steel chair by Sean Spears. Then he says like, you know, compliments of MJF. Of course, right? Why not? Then later in the show, we get Tony Schiavone. And Tony Schiavone's with Tully Blanchard. And they call out Conan. Conan comes out to this very, very sweet TNA LAX um, music theme. And Conan then proceeds... To run a train on Tully Blanchard, verbally, of course. By saying that he knows that Tully comes from North... Tully and um, FTR, they come from North Carolina, where the, where the men are men and the sheep are scared. <laughs> Later, he tells him he needs to learn Spanish so he can communicate with his grandchildren. Which is a nice little dig at Daga and um, Tessa. Because, you, know, you know, Tessa Blanchard married a Mexican. So Conan came out there and was great. You know, he even, he dropped some woke shit uh, about, you know, racial profiling and, you know, incarceration rates for men of color and all that mm -hmm. garbage. But for the most part, his promo was very good. You could tell that he really thought about what he was going to say before he said it. Tully Blanchard, by comparison, really didn't have anything to say. He really just got blitzed. And <laughs> he was only really there to set up the, the ambush. Because this is pretty much a Conan segment. So then uh, Tully tells his boys to come out. And then uh, Conan told his boys to come out. Two guys in face masks come on out. Of course, at this point, you know it's a, you know it's a switch. Because, you know, why would Santana or Ortiz be face covered wearing a AEW shirts? I mean, or hoodies. Why would they be doing that? In any event, uh, we, we go to the big screen. Because every promo has to have a big screen moment. And we see Santana and Ortiz down on the ground. Then we see FTR jump Conan. And they beat the tar out of Conan. Give him a power driver. Which surprised the hell out of me. Because I didn't know Conan was out here taking bumps. Christ Lord. Conan is out here taking bumps. I was very impressed. I loved this segment. This, this segment was very good. I want Conan with these guys all the time. This is perfect. Right. Obviously, uh, it, they're playing off of TNA. You know, you know <laughs> it's always up to the new promotion to, to live off the laurels of the old ones. You know, when TNA was doing their thing, they were constantly leeching off of, off of ECW. You know, now you got <laughs> AEW leeching off of TNA, um, tickling the old nostalgia bone, even though for me, LEX is not that old. But, you know, they're leeching off the nostalgia bone. And you know what? This was fine. I loved this. I loved that Conan was like, you're just their manager. Me, I'm their father. You know, when they couldn't find their dad, they called me. You know, like that's that really set what he means to, um, I was about to call him LAX, to Santana and Ortiz. He kept calling them pride and powerful too. Because I know that he's kind of been on a binge about that on this podcast. Like, you know, why don't they call them pride and powerful? So he's really made sure to really nail the name. And then he got jumped and took a power driver. So he really is doing what he can to help his boys get over. And I and I really love that. You know, I love Conan for that. That was excellent. Later, MJF um, says that he sees why people are upset about what he did to Jericho, what Spears did about Sammy Guevara. But we should be thanking him for what he did to Dean Malenko. Because Dean Malenko is so old. When he was a kid, rainbows were in black and white. And he gave him an early retirement, even though he's got a bad heart and Parkinson's. He's got no business being in the wrestling business. And um, I was kind of like, okay. You know, like, they're constantly beating up significantly older talent. Again, Dean Malenko is a guy who, unless you're 30 plus, you don't really know Dean Malenko. And you don't. And then his relationship with Chris Jericho was nebulous at best. They were rivals in WCW. They weren't really like best friends who went out and drunk with each other and all that kind of stuff. So we're in a we're in a weird position here. This one doesn't work as well 
you know, but Dean Malenko as a guy. And then it's not like we saw Dean Malenko for weeks and weeks and weeks. Again, I said this before. It's not like we've seen him for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then uh, this happens. It was like he was on screen once and then this happens. The difference between this and Conan is that Conan talked extensively about his relationship with those guys. You know, when he says, you know, you're just their manager, I'm their father. And he talked about how when they get in trouble, they call him. When he talks about knowing them backwards and forwards, how they lived on the streets in New York and all that kind of stuff. He knew them, right? We got a, like, it still happened too soon. Sure. But we, he, we got the sense that Conan knew them and that Conan had a long history with these guys. Here, we don't know what the long history between Jericho and Malenko is because they did one segment together. And now Dean Malenko was thrust into this storyline where he's just one of the many old guys getting beat up by the Pinnacle. Um, so uh, Jake Hager and Chris Jericho attacked the Pinnacle, and that's all four of them. You know, FTR, Spears, MJF, well, Wardlow, it's five, okay? So these two guys, well, it was four, I believe, at the time. And these two guys commenced to beating the shit out of all four of these guys. Two guys are beating up four. Each one, Jericho and Hager, are beating up two guys. And the two guys are like falling all over. The, <laughs> the four guys are falling all over the place. They're tumbling all over the place. They don't look like badass heels at all. And then I believe uh, who came? somebody came in to give them the advantage. And they, they knock them down. Boom, boom, boom. Get Jericho down. Get Hager down. And MJF is now about to bash Jericho in the arm with a steel chair. And then here comes Sammy Guevara. And Sammy Guevara comes in. He hits the ring. And with a steel chair, a 60-pound cruiserweight ran off four guys with a steel chair by hitting them with the chair. And then he grabbed the mic and he says that, you know, this company chose the wrong guy for the action figures. He's got this company chose the wrong guy for all the posters. Wednesday, I show you why I'm the best ever and you know it. And I was like, you know, he got a huge response when he came out. They played his music, you know, before he came out, which I'm, I'm not a fan of, but it was effective. He had a huge response. He got a big heroic uh, comeback. He got to beat up every member of the Pinnacle, which I didn't really like. You know, I would have rather him hit two of them and the other two scatter or something like that than him beating up everybody. It's just not believable. You know, he's paper thin with a bird chest. I just don't believe that, you know, even with a steel chair, people are that scared of Sammy Guevara. You know, like you can't do every spot with everybody. I think that that might be the, the long and the short of it. You can't do every spot with everybody. You know, there could have been other ways that they could have done this. I can't think of any off the top of my head. But I'm okay with Sammy Guevara being the guy to make the save. But then we also kind of said to ourselves, okay, he got hit with a chair. And then they were like, is he going to be okay for Wednesday? It was like, he was, he was all right a half hour later. He was literally okay uh, <laughs> 40 minutes later or something, something like that. We could have done something cool, like sent him into the Wednesday match injured, which would have given him a good excuse to lose, and he really should lose. I don't see why he needs to beat MJF. But they did a good job of making Sammy Guevara seem legit. Okay. I'll give them credit for that. I don't really like the segment because, again, it just it was just the inner circle making the pinnacle look stupid by beating the hell out of them routinely. Like, I get the baby face shine. Cool. But four on two and the, and the four are losing and then this is after you put their face in the toilet and all that other kind of stuff through right like we had two big blow-off matches in this feud three because we had the, the mma fight had three big blow-off feuds for this feud already and it's still going because now we're getting to the one-on-one -on -one matches i don't know but whatever i didn't hate this all right i didn't hate the pinnacle and the inner circle stuff this week I thought it was pretty good. I thought the Conan stuff was the best, second best shit on the show behind the main event. I actually thought the main event was pretty strong. All right, so let's talk about the first match. Powerhouse Hobbs does the job for Hangman Page with a dead eye. Um, <clears throat> Hangman Page uh, boinked his head on the middle turnbuckle, slashed the ring post, and busted himself open. I don't know how many times this guy's going to bust himself open you know, before somebody needs to teach him how to hit a ring post. Um, but... It, it looked pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty bloody out there. Uh, for some reason, Hook and Starks came out there with the FTW title. I don't know. I don't know why. 
But Cage came out there to retrieve the FTW title and ended up snatching off Ricky Stark's shirt. And Ricky Starks ran away like a woman. Like if you pull her bra top off and she, she's trying to cover up and run away. I was like, I, I don't get it. I don't get this. This is dumb. Anyway, uh, Paige wins. Match was, eh? It was, eh? Hobbs looks, Hobbs it looks like a big, strong dude. Doesn't get booked like a big, strong dude. His, um, his cross body is pretty stiff, though. I do like that. So the Young Bucks cut a promo saying that the longest reigning tag team champions and that they bring aggression out of people and that they like to hurt people. And that they're the EVPs, extremely violent people. I like to call them the EVPs, the extremely vapid people. This sucked. Later, we get uh, Eddie Kingston, who um, I guess that's who they were threatening. And Eddie Kingston said, you guys are not serious about taking people out. You've never done that. You know, all you care about is your ego. And one thing we got to do is take your titles. That'll hurt you and your ego. Then he says, you tell him, best friend. And then, um, you know, Penta says some things. And then Alex Abrahantes says, uh, Penta says, you talk about the people you run over on Wednesday. We run over you. And I was like, mm, okay, whatever. I don't like the Young Bucks. I don't. Um, I, so I don't care. I don't care about their promo at all. Um, Eddie Kingston has... Not been a good baby face so far. Uh, it's not working out. Uh, and it's, it's sad because I wanted it to work out. But it's not looking good so far. This tag team thing is just not really working out for him. So Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. That match is about to start when Vicky Guerrero comes out. Excuse me! Excuse me! And she's she um, introduces Andrade El Idolo, who actually gets a crowd response this time, but not a big one. He gets a he gets a minute crowd response this time, and um, she was said that they had a they had something to say. They had a big announcement, and he got cut off by Matt Seidel coming to the ring. Um, Andrade was a like he's about to jump Matt Seidel from behind. You know, Vicky kind of stopped him. Uh, so I'm guessing Andrade's first opponent is going to be Matt Seidel. Um, that's not good. That's not good at all, dog. Um, <laughs> I know you have to get them some wins before you can, I know AEW does say, oh, they want to give them some wins to build them up or, or something like that. But you really should just put the guy in a feud, you know, let's put him in a feud with somebody and not something like you talk, you, you walk it through my promo, you know, it's like, come on, man. And plus we know he's going to beat the Matt Seidel. So who cares? Um, Matt Seidel defeats Dante Martin. They did all the flips in the world. Um, this match was uh, literally for no reason. It was just gymnastic masturbation. Gym masturbation. Uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, they, so physically it was fine, but whatever. Jungle Boy, who says in interviews that he doesn't like doing promos, uh, is backstage and he's about to say, he says about a word, a word and a half, before Christian Cage comes up and says that he shouldn't just be happy to be here. That people think you don't deserve this. And Kenny Omega is one of them. And you shocked the world when you won the Battle Royal. Now you shocked the world again. And the big promo for Jungle Boy is, thanks. Thanks, man. I knew he wasn't going to win the title already. They did not do a good job of making me think he was going to win the title leading up to this match. This was not good. He needs to learn how to fucking talk. He needs to learn how to talk for himself. Even if it's just enough to get through a promo. He needs to know how to talk for himself. He needs to know how to talk for himself. All right? If he doesn't want to talk, that's why you make him talk. He needs to know how to talk for himself. I'm sorry. You can't be a main event guy and you can't talk. You know? Or you don't have a manager. So either give him a fucking manager... Which it would be weird because he's a babyface and an undersized babyface at that. But, you know, they, they, they're really getting on my nerves. But the match itself, let's talk about the match now. Jungle Boy versus Kenny Omega. So everybody comes out, you know, uh, Marco Stunt's out there. Luchasaurus is out there. The Good Brothers are out there. The referee, you know, because Marco Stunt, for some reason, is being rowdy. The rowdiest midget of all time. The referee just throws everybody out. To make this match purely one-on-one, -on -one, Omega, Jungle Boy. Now, what made this match dope was the crowd. 
crowd was super behind Jungle Boy. He has incredible energy for him. It was GOAT. Even though you know Jungle Boy has no chance of winning, it was still people biting on every little uh, two count that they put forward. I really enjoyed this. It was not too much as far as Kenny Omega's performances of him doing spamming knee strikes and stuff like that. And I actually liked how he got him in the snare trap when he um, countered the knee strike into the snare trap. It was a great spot. Then the, um, the Good Brothers came out there. Well, I think it was Carl Anderson and it, they fought off because that's what they do. They fought off. Um, and then eventually Kenny Omega's, you know, his experience, his skill, just too much. Tiger Driver 98 gets a two count. One wing angel uh, gets the three. Good match. It, to, the best way I can explain it is it, it wasn't quite. I, I was th watching this thinking to myself, OK, are they, are they going to have a Bret Hart one, two, three kid style match? And, you know, that was it was close. You know, it wasn't quite Triple H versus Takamichi no Ku, but it was more like Triple H. No, it wasn't Triple H. It was Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. Do you remember that episode of Raw where Cody had a really good match for Randy Orton? And um, it, it looked for a moment like Cody would win, but he lost. That was, that's what this was. You know, it felt like this guy really had a chance of winning. You know, even though you believe, you know, Going into it, he didn't really have a chance, but they booked him really, really strong, really, really well. He was able to counter a lot of what Kenny Omega was doing. He was able to keep up with him athletically. So it was it was fun. It was a fun match. And then they overdid it at the end because after Jungle Boy gets beaten, Omega starts to uh, do some extra damage. You know, he's a heel. OK, then Christian comes out for the post-match save. And Christian fights off Kenny Omega. And then Matt Hardy attacks Christian. So, you know, um, because their their feud is long-term and forever, apparently. Okay. Christian and Matt Hardy is, you know, still a thing. But they're setting up Christian versus Omega. Okay, cool. You know, that match should have happened at the pay-per-view. Instead of that stupid triple threat match, which you could have had on TV. Um, but, Okay. You know, um, I guess we're going to take it. We're going to take the long way there, but I guess we're, we're going to still get there. So, all right. Let's see. Hashtag Jade brand. 10% off Jade merchandise. That, on a, with a code that B on her t-shirts. Then she says, I'm one of one. No one looks like me. I'm that bitch. And she rips the shirt. Eight weeks straight of, of Jade just standing, standing still saying she's that bitch. And I saw Access Media like, oh my God, she should be in Marvel movies. She's such a movie star. I'm like eight weeks of just standing in one place cutting promos. She stands in one place and literally says one thing. <laughs> and it's been like eight weeks of this. Come on, bro. Like, let's be real. Let's be real, man. Her only talent is standing still and looking ripped. That's pretty much it. I mean, what little we've seen her do has been very little. You know, if she was really like this huge star, she would at least be on TV winning matches. She's literally doing nothing. So I don't get it. And uh, it makes no sense that they would, you know, go through all this stuff and have her teamed up with this weirdo, this Mark Sterling. And we're literally not getting anything out of it. All right. So next... Miro cuts the promo. Thanks God for being for his strength and for his hot wife. Then says that, you know, people are standing in the way of a righteous man in his path as he tries to protect a, <laughs> a lonely woman or something like that. It's like standing between a predator and his meats or, you know, something to that effect. I said, he's going to show y'all why God, God, he's God's favorite champion. And that attacking him was the stupidest thing Brian Pillman Jr. has ever done. So then Brian Pillman Jr. says, you know, that uh, Miro has a Messiah complex and that he got a complex, too. It's that that he was born on the wrong side of the tracks and had to fight for everything. I mean, it was fine or whatever, but we know he's not got he's got no chance of winning either. You know, uh, this version of Miro has been pretty good. He's still been kind of humorous um, with him being God's favorite champion and everything. But it's uh, it's not completely stupid. 
you know, with him coming across as being very menacing. And I enjoy that because he looks the part. So that's good. Uh, next match, Ethan Page versus Bear Bronson. In a match that felt like, oh my God, uh, AEW Dark Evolution has invaded AEW Dynamite. This match sucked, of course. Uh, Page wins with the Ego's Edge. And then Page challenges Darby Allen to a coffin match. Post match, he, <laughs> he challenged him to a coffin match. All right. Um, I guess it, it seems to make sense. They guess they have history. We haven't seen the history. They haven't talked about the history. They just, well, they talked about it. Well, Ethan Page has talked about it. We haven't seen any footage. We, we didn't build up you know, over time. This kind of thing. It just comes across as being, we need to have a, some type of garbage match to put on TV. And you know what? It's fine. So following this, Vicky Guerrero and Britt Baker, they had dueling promos. Britt Baker made fun of um, Vicky for wanting a match instead of wanting a football team or something that actually is worth something, which is a good dig because, you know, it was kind of stupid that she wants a match. Then she says that, you know, she's the face of a new era and excuse me in advance for beating your ass. Vicky Guerrero says an opportunity to solidify Nyla Rose as the number one contender and that they, you know, they get their teasing still that there's some kind of surprise. And uh, people seem to think it's going to be Thea Trinidad. Um, I hope so. So we can finally stop talking about that. So then the next match was the Bunny versus Chris Statlander. And another match that didn't need to happen. That felt like uh, AEW Dark Evolution was actually taking place. Chris Statlander wins with the Big Bang Theory. During the match, Orange Cassidy took the brass knuckles away from the Bunny and put them in his pockets. Post-match, uh, the Blade and Helico and Jack Evans jumped Orange Cassidy, beat him up, and knocked him out with brass knuckles. So that was a thing um, that took place. So I'm guessing Orange Cassidy, who went from wrestling to champion, is now going to be in a feud with the Bunny, the Blade, Jack Evans, and and Helico. Whoopee. Whoop e. Oh, that's about it. Well, I guess there was a QT Marshall thing where he said he hopes Cody gets a movie role so he can leave. But, uh, but this show wasn't, it wasn't as awful as usual. This show was usually pretty awful. It's usually pretty suck ass. This was actually not bad. There was some enjoyable stuff in it. Did enjoy the Inner Circle Pinnacle stuff for the most part and the Jungle Boy Kenny Omega match. But of course, my favorite was Conan coming out there shredding uh, Tully Blanchard. I thought that was really good. So there was some stuff about this show that I liked. It wasn't as bad as usual. Um, of course, it's not going to be like this every week. In fact, we got probably about four days well, <laughs> until we have to do this all over again. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, like, share, subscribe, donate via Cash App or Subscribestar. Either way it goes. Thank you for your time, and I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, non-aggression. Once that lesson sets in, you'll see a session. But you got an affection for no progression. Regression. The